Good morning, family and friends. Welcome to Baseline Family Church. Wow, what an exciting Sunday. <laughs> I know it's my birthday today, so please, you know, let's sing together happy birthday. No, I'm only joking, but yes, it is my birthday. And thank you for sharing this day with me. You know, the theme of this year, the year 2021, is the theme that God has given me. And I believe this theme will sustain you in this year of confusion and challenges. This is Jesus' first recorded words in Luke 2, verse 49. I must be about my father's business. 2021 is all about the father's business. And what will that create? That will create in the church, in the body of Christ at large, and in the corporate gatherings, a unity and a maturity. Why is unity so important? Because listen to the statement. A place of agreement is a place of power. A place of agreement, unity, two coming together in unity is a place of power. The scripture says in Matthew 18, 19, to say it in another way. If two of you on earth agree, that's unity. We are together. We are certain. We are in one accord, one mind of one spirit, then on, uh, agree on anything you pray for my Father. See, again, the Father's business in heaven will do what you've asked. This is amazing, the power of two, where we agree in unity. And the one was maturity. Maturity is that we, what we need uh, in this year to really run this race of endurance. Not to get sidetracked or distracted by social media and stuff. You know, even right now on social media, there's a new, uh, what can I say, a new craze, a new teaching. There's no rapture. Listen, people are spending time putting stuff on social media telling you Jesus is not coming back for his bride. There is no rapture. That's why we need maturity. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 12, that as we build up the body of Christ until we attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen to this. Why is unity and maturity so important? So that we may no longer, say no longer, no longer be children. See, because children needs direction. Children needs leading. Children needs supervision. And when you're a mature Christian, you can make mature choices. You're of age in the kingdom. Why children? Children tossed to and fro by the waves. We live in a stormy world. There's waves, there's storms, there's doctrine. Trying to take you off, 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 off the course that God has set you. Carry about every wind of doctrine by the human cunning, by the craftiness in deceitful schemes. I want to tell you, family, this, there is a lot of schemes going out there. But I want to say to you, keeping on the Father's business, keeping you focused, realigning your life, what is important, make new uh, uh, decisions concerning how important your life in Christ is. Because Jesus said, I have to be busy with my Father's business. And literally this means busy with my Father's things. Or busy with the things of my Father. That is what Jesus said. So let's listen in James, uh, John 4, another words that Jesus has used to describe his focus, his determination about the Father's business. He says to his disciples, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. I have food to eat 
that you know nothing about. Just, just think about the picture, the shock on the disciples' face. And I'm going to read to you through the Scriptures, John 4. You know, Jesus was tired, sitting at the well, hungry, tired. He's a human. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, the, the disciples went away to get it some food. And when they came back, they find him energized, passionate, focused on the Father's business. And I wonder who gave him food. And Jesus used these profound words. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So let's get into the Scripture. John 4, verse 3, and I'm just going to read certain scriptures or passages because of time. So when Jesus heard what's being said, he left Judea and went back to Galilee. On his way there, he had to go through Samaria. Jesus said as a young boy, I had to do, be busy with my father's business. He had Jesus as an adult, as a mature man, used the same wording to be totally committed about his father's business. I had to go through Samaria. And Samaria came to a town named Sagar, which was not far from the field of that Jacob has given to his son Joseph. Joseph's well was there, and Jesus tied out by the trip, sat down at the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came down to draw some water, and Jesus said to her, give me water to drink. Verse 8, his disciples has gone into town to buy food. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah will come, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. And listen, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I'm the Messiah. Verse 27. At that moment, his disciples returned, and they were greatly surprised to find him talking to a woman. Not only was it, was it a Samaritan woman, it was like Jews do not speak, you know. That it's a man speaking to an unknown woman. They were shocked about this interaction about Jesus Christ. And listen how they, how they reason in questioning. But no one said to her, what do you want? Or ask him, why are you talking to her? So I want to ask the woman, hey, what's up? And say, Jesus, why are you doing this? It's about my father's business. They didn't understand the father's business. Then the woman left the water jar, went back to town, and said to the people, they come and see the man. Won't this be amazing, family? When the world, when people unsaved and you are busy with the Father's business can speak into their lives and a miracle happens and they go back to their families, not ashamed about their history, not ashamed about their sinful life, not ashamed of what I've done, but I go to their family and friends and say, come and see, I know a man who told me everything I have ever done. <laughs> not something that ever done. Could he be the Messiah? So they left the town and went to Jesus. In the meantime, the disciples were begging Jesus to eat. He said, teacher, eat. Have something to eat. But Jesus answered, yes, the Mephimt of today. I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So his disciples started asking among themselves, could somebody have brought him food? And Jesus again has to address this. Because there's a carnal and a spiritual level here. There's a natural desire to eat. And Jesus introduced them, when you're busy with the Father's business, there is food you don't know of. And then he explains the food. Listen, family. Here is the food that you need in 2021. My food, Jesus said to him, is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me to do. That is the food of us as believers busy with the Father's house in 2021. My food, Jesus said, is to obey the will. Obey the will of God. Get the word of God into your life. Obey the one that sends you. Jesus has given you a mandate to preach this good news to every living creature on this planet called earth. It is a good season to be a witness of Jesus Christ and do what he has called you to do. So who was the Samaritan woman? Why was she alone at the well? I believe this is a picture of our society. It's a picture of people. A story of this world being rejected, being outcast, ashamed of their past and their lifestyle. So Jesus, this story starts with Jesus and his disciples in the countryside of Judea. On their way to Galilee. And when Jesus used these profound words, I know we're going to Galilee. But I had 
to go. I must go to Samaria. I must go through a certain town. Because there's a certain woman that knows a certain message. Well, can I tell you something? The Father's business is attentional. Jesus is intentional, busy with the Father's business. It is not, family, can I say this to you? When this is in itself uncommon for a Jew to speak to a Samaritan, because Samaritans was half-breeds. They were half-Jews and half-Gentiles. Uh, they were not the best of friends. It was uncommon. And I want to tell you, being at the Father's business, it's, us, it's time for us to have an uncommon lifestyle. What do I mean by that? I mean, let us push the borders. Let us cross the culture, the ethnic groups. Let us enter into people's houses because they need the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are the end of themselves. Let me read you James 4, 5 and 6. In Samaria, he came to a town named, Sag named Sagar. You know the word Sagar, that word means? It means end, end. So Jesus comes to a town called End. There's no one else, nowhere else to go. People came to the end of their life, uh, the end of their own wisdom and understanding, the end of decision making. They cannot go any further. This is the last stop. And then therefore there's no hope. So Jesus moves to the certain town for this lady in a certain space that has nowhere to go. This is the end. It's something that doesn't miraculously impact her life. Her life will end there in a sinful habit and a sinful way. So Jesus comes. Jesus was tired from the long trip. So he sat down beside the well. It was about noon. Noon is the hottest time of the day. It is 12 o'clock. So we can ask her, why is this lady at 12 o'clock at the well by herself? So the question is, why? The answer is because who she is. She's an outcast. She's ashamed of her lifestyle. You know, women usually go early in the mornings or late in the evenings. And it was always a time of interaction. It's always like women today going shopping together. And when they go shopping, they're talking and interacting. That's usually the culture around the well. But this lady, this woman came by herself. Because she didn't want to face the band. Didn't want to face all the accusations. So Jesus sees this lady approaching the well. Now, here comes this lady. And something happens. Regularly, every time or every day, uh, time of the day, she will do. You know, her habits has formed her. Her habits. Because of pain, because of shame, she created a lifestyle of habit to be at the well at 12. Many people have created habits in 2020 that brings them to a place of loneliness, of shame and guilt. I've got good news for you this morning, family. We that's busy with the Father's business, I want to tell you, you have an appointment at the well. Jesus is going to meet your need at the well. There's life at the well. There's living waters at the well. Family, God wants to do a great thing at the well, but we have to be at our father's business. So now he has a conversation. She's been married five times, and the one she's carrying live with is a, a boyfriend. It's a boyfriend. So because of her lifestyle, she wants to avoid the shame and the guilt by coming to the well by herself. You know, Jesus intentionally sought to meet her, that specific woman, at that specific time. You know, the Father's business is so specific. This, the Father's business, it's so awesome. That food, Jesus said to his disciples, I have food you know nothing about. It just, it just does something on the inside of me. It feeds my spirit man. It overrides the flesh. I was tired. I started to minister. I was started to doing my father's business. And now I'm refreshed. I'm on fire. If I can say that way. So Jesus revealed. How is Jesus revealed? 
in this, in this context, in this scripture, in this communication, in this story. You know, there's three facets, if I can say like this. Three facets that Jesus revealed himself. The first one, Jesus revealed himself as living waters. Living waters. He has a woman that needs water to sustain a natural life. And Jesus says, I am the living water. Drink of me and you will first know more. Wow. Jesus revealed himself that there is something that he can do inside of you that will influence the life outside of you. Can I say this again? Drink of the living water, get it inside of you, and Jesus, the living water, will influence the atmosphere, the circumstances on the outside of you. So he asked her, give me some water. Let me read you verse 10. And then he said to her, if only you knew what God gives and who it is that is asking you to do for a drink, you would ask him and he will give you living water. Jesus says, I am the well of life. Ask me, family, people need to ask. I believe if we had the Father's business and God has really granted us the grace this year to move into that space, people will start asking, what kind of a life do you have? Why is there so much joy in your life? And you can say, listen, I have the water of life. Jesus revealed. Give them that from, from that living waters that's inside of you. There's a well inside of you that cannot run dry. The second one, Jesus reveals himself as a prophet. Verse 16, go and call your husband, Jesus told her, and come back. I do not have a husband, she answered Jesus. Jesus replied, you are right when you say you do not have a husband. For you've been married five times, and the man you live now is not really your husband. You have told me the truth. Listen to a response. I see you are a prophet, sir. So this woman says to Jesus, because Jesus is revealing something that she knows. No one else knows but those in town. This is a person that doesn't know her name, doesn't know her lifestyle, and they speak prophetically into her life. Listen, family, I believe we as a church, if we're going to start being busy of the Father's business, eating the food that no one else knows about, we will have prophetic voice in society. Not a prophetic voice of complaining and moaning, but a prophetic voice speaking into the lives of people and bring change and difference. She says, sir, I see, I perceive you because of what you said to me, that secrets I carry inside, that word of knowledge that Jesus wants to use through the body of Christ, through the church, that gift is relevant right now in this season in people's lives. That prophetic voice that can speak. But here is the awesomeness. Here is the awesomeness of this prophetic voice. Here is the, the, the rapping of that prophetic voice. The prophetic voice was not condemnation. Jesus didn't expose the sin so that she can feel bad. He used that prophetic voice to lure out. You know, because religion condemns. Jesus is all about relationship. Relationship restores. He wants her eyes to be opened to the truth of who he is. Listen, family, the world outside, their eyes need to be opened to the truth who Jesus really is. And that prophetic unction, that prophetic gift, that the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom that God wants to use you mightily in the Father's business will help the world to see Jesus not as a religion, but as relationship. I really believe the world needs to start to see the church in a different light because we do not expose to break down. We do not expose to condemn. We expose to bring healing. Jesus revealed number three as the Messiah. As the Messiah. Let me read you John 4, 24, 26. God is spirit and only, only by the power of the spirit can people worship him really. And the William said to her, I know the Messiah will come, and when he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said, he is talking to you now. 
I am the Messiah. Ain't it amazing? Jesus introduced that woman to a person, not a doctrine. Follow me, here's the mistake we make at church. When we visit people, when we speak about the good news of Jesus Christ, we introduce people to a doctrine. No, introduce them to the person of Jesus Christ. This is amazing. Hope it's a revelation to you. Say Jesus, because Jesus is the good news. He is the healer. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah. You know this word Messiah in the Greek and the Hebrew means the same, the anointed one. He is the anointed one. That anointed and can destroy every yoke of the enemy. People need to engage the space of the person of Jesus Christ to be set free from demonic oppression and be healed in Jesus' name. That's what Christ means. So this encounter that Jesus had with this lady teaches us three principles that I really believe. If we say we are at the Father's business, if we say we have food that you know nothing to eat, if we say that, this is three principles that must operate in our church, in the believer's heart, in the body of Christ. What is the first principle? The living water, Jesus Christ, fills the void. We need to understand that each person on this earth, without Jesus Christ, has a void. That Samaritan woman, she filled that void in her life with men. She had five Five was not good enough. She was busy with number six. six. And so in this world, people around us are filling their life with stuff that's useless. Temporal has no eternal value. There's a voidness that only Jesus can fill. People are looking around. Stuff outside Christ to give their life meaning and purpose. Can I say this to you? Maybe you listen to me this morning and you're outside Christ. There is no purpose and meaning to life outside Jesus. Jesus is the beginning and the end. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You need to find a way to have purpose and meaning in life. You know, Jesus is the living water that we need. You can, you can put your faith in Jesus. Trust Him as the living waters. We know that this, this river, this well will never run dry. Family, we need to understand this principle. This well will never run dry. Jesus will never turn people away. Jesus is the source of joy and hope and love and truth. Jesus is the source of abundant life, John 10.10. 10. So he is the well that we need to use people. You need, you need to know that a well of Jesus Christ will fill the voidness in your life. Number two that we need, that principle that we need to operate by, is Jesus was not rattled by people's sin. He wasn't rattled, engaging this woman at the well, knowing because he was the Messiah, he was the anointer, knowing where she came from, that prophetic voice, he draw her out to speak about her lifestyle, her confession. I do not have a husband. That prophetic unction. Jesus lures her out and he takes away the shame and the guilt. He shows, he's not shocked. One thing that I was taught when I was a young Christian, came into the ministry, becoming a pastor. You know, this year I will celebrate, actually the month of, of February, I will be celebrating my 25th year in the full-time ministry. And one thing as, as an early pastor, a young pastor, as a counselor, my counselor, my mentor said to me, listen, when people tell you their story, their life story, if people expose their sinful lifestyle, you as a counselor never look shocked. Don't go, <gasps> what? Never. Even Jesus, this lady, sitting at the well, engaging her, wasn't rattled by her lifestyle. Because Jesus knows, he's sovereign. He knows the sinful hearts that we have. He, know, he was not surprised by the desires of the flesh and how far that lady was supposed to, or how far she would go to satisfy that need. Because Jesus came to seek and to save the lost and to reconcile us with the Father. That is the spirit of the Father. That is our Father's business. 
Not to be rattled how wicked people can be, but to speak past that wickedness, past that sinful nature, and reconcile them with the Heavenly Father. Oh, my Lord. He, God the Father is so good. He loves people so much that He gave His Son, Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Bible says, Romans 5, 8. God shows His love for us. That why we will still sinners, why we will still sinners, living with number six, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Jesus was willing to die for our sin. He was willing to have all the beatings, the transgressions, the, 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 the total humiliation on the cross. So we can be justified and have eternal life. Number three. First one is there is a voidness in every person. Second one is we don't get rattled by people's sin if we are busy with the Father's business. The fourth one, Jesus is the Savior. It is only Jesus that can save you from our sins. Jesus puts our sins and our shames to death on the cross. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans, John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but listen to this, but will have the light of life. Not the light that will show life, but the light that of life, the life of Christ. We will have that life. He will give us a new desire, a new purpose that cannot be satisfied with the earthly things. Can I say to you, Jesus is the Savior. And without Jesus, nothing else can satisfy your needs, but only the kingdom of God. We are called daily to take up our cross and follow Him. We are called to submit our talents. Family, when you have the Father's business, you are called to submit your times, your treasures, your finances. We are called to submit our talents and our gifts for the King of the Kings. Your life should exalt His holy name. Matthew 5.15 Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, yeah, Jesus speaks about people being with the Father's business. He says, listen, you, are, you have the light of life. You are the light of this world, and you do not take a light and put it under a basket. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Speaking to you, family, Speaking to the body of Christ, the body of believers. Let your light shine so that they may see your good works. So what, what is your light? Your lifestyle. Can I say this again? What is your light? Your good works. Your lifestyle in the kingdom. Put in the kingdom first. Matthew 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all this other stuff. will be added unto you. This is what Jesus meant. We are busy with the Father's business. Your good works and give glory to your Father, which is in heaven. Wow. We've got a great opportunity this year with the theme of 2021, being at our Father's business to give God the glory. Family, I want to challenge you. Come to Christ. Let Him fill you anew. Be forgiven if you've been slacked down, lukewarm. You know, get rid of that guilt and shame. Because we must become, Jesus must become the treasure. As, that, as he became the treasure of that Samaritan woman, Jesus must become the all in all. He must become the life in us. Because as that woman ran back to the town and said, listen, I know, I know I'm a bad girl. I know you don't want to see me. We haven't spoken for many years. I'm sorry, taking your husband so-and-so. She said, listen, come and see I want to introduce you to a man that knows everything. All of a sudden, there's no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. And the people saw that upright, upright conversion in life, that born-again face. They didn't argue with her. They followed her. I want to say to you, when we in the Father's business and you share the gospel of people and they become born again, that testimony, man, will draw people to Jesus. That we cannot stop ourselves from falling in love again. Cannot stop ourselves from telling others about the joy we have found in the life of Jesus Christ. What I'm saying to you today, listen to me family, we no longer need the next best thing. What is the next best thing? 
Because Jesus is the greatest thing that ever happened to us. There's no desire for the next best thing. We have the best. Jesus Christ. The Alpha and Omega. The Son of God. So I want to answer your question. Being at the Father's business. Martin, help me. Well, listen to Jesus' words again. My food, Jesus said to them, is to obey the will of the one who sent me and to finish the work he gave me to do. He finished the work he gave me to do. Can we believe in a rapture? Because our work is done. Can we really believe this morning, family? Can you can say this morning, can you look me in the eye this morning and say, Martin, I have food you do not know of. In the natural, I might be tired. In the natural, I might be concerned about many things. In the natural, I might feel like hopeless. But listen, when I'm busy with the Father's work, the kingdom will re-energize me. The kingdom refocus me. The kingdom revives me. I have food you do not know of. And I think this is part of the Holy Communion, Pastor Jesse. Amen. Yes, what a powerful message this morning. Thank you, Pastor Martin. I, I don't want to take up extra time, but you know, as a family, can we get together around the table of the Lord this morning and share in the life of Christ that which he has done for us? Let us take this bread, his body, and apply it to our own lives wherever we need it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The same with his blood. He said, this is my blood. This is a sign of our covenant. Yes. Our covenant, like a, a marriage covenant. To agree. Yeah. We've got a covenant. I've got certain privileges because of this covenant. And this is our covenant with Christ. We've got certain privileges as yes. children of God. So let us remind each other as we take it and celebrate what he's done for us. Amen. Amen. So, yes, I want to say happy birthday to my wonderful husband for what, 33 years. Yep. Um, a wonderful grandfather, a wonderful father to our children, a wonderful husband. I couldn't have asked for a better life partner that God has blessed me with. Um, he makes me laugh, as you could see. You know, he's just being with him is is a it's joy. And so I just want to wish you a very happy birthday, Pastor Martin, from Baseline family, from all your friends and family. We love you, and we hope God bless you with many more years of wisdom, health, joy, and peace. Amen. Mwah. <laughs> well, thank you, family. And remember, the Father's business is all about souls. Let's win souls this year. Let's be a testimony. Let's be alive. God bless you. See you Wednesday morning. Bye-bye. We want to invite a special uh, new teacher, servant of... Yeah, well. <laughs> what did I say? A visiting boss. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah. Well, good morning, friends and family to Baseline Family Church. This morning, we've got a special surprise, seeing that it's Pastor Martin's birthday this morning. And we invited the visiting pastor to just come and say a short little uh, message to Pastor Martin. And his name is Pastor Johan. Just welcome him with us. Welcome, Pastor Johan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, family and friends. Well, Pastor Martin, I want to say to you, happy birthday from your twin brother, the one you don't want to mention, uh, Johan. So, Pastor Martin, have an awesome day. And hope you are blessed. Your family is really 
has blessed you, has a great surprise for you this year. I know you, you're 56, but please don't behave like a person of 56. Be yourself. So please, Pastor Martin, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Bye-bye, Pastor Martin. Well, good morning, family and friends. Welcome to Baseline Family Church, your church of choice. I want to tell you, I'm very excited about this year because...